As things stand, Eric Ten Hag is still in a job right now. But how long will this last? We've obviously heard about the great meeting that happened. We're now told it was just a normal meeting, a normal monthly meeting about what the future is, the years coming to an end, financial here. It was a normal meeting where Eric Ten Hag was discussed, but he was not the point of that meeting. Although we have just heard some new reports coming out that a decision or a conclusion has finally been made on Eric Ten Hag and he is here, but how long will he stay here? Welcome to the Red Devils Den. Let's get into this video. This international break seems like one of the longest I've ever had. It feels like it's already been three months of international break. It's only been week one. We still have another week to go. And where does that leave Man United and Eric Ten Hag? I think what we have to be extremely mindful of is that the meeting, obviously the meeting that happened was not necessarily about Eric Ten Hag, although he was spoken about. And ever since that meeting, every day we have article upon article, tweet upon tweet about who Sir Jim thinks should be the next manager, who Sir Alex Ferguson thinks should be the next manager who Roy Keane thinks the next manager should be. Every day there are new reports, which kind of makes you think that he probably still is under scrutiny and they still are monitoring the situation. Now, Eric Ten Hag is currently still the Manchester United manager. Will he still be the manager come Brentford? I actually think he will. It looks like we're on a game-to-game -game basis now. And I think it's true what Gary Neville said. He said the draw at Villa did save him some time and probably did save his job for now. And I just think this is absolutely ridiculous. The fact that there has been no certain statement yet that Ineos actually support Eric Ten Hag, I think is ridiculous because now it just leaves us and the media to speculate and the media loves speculating. And sometimes fans, we love speculating too. Um, although some of us, I'll speak for myself, I am Eric Ten Hag in. Um, obviously, it's been a bumpy ride, but I think with the structure above him, um, and the proper recruitment over the next two to three, maybe four years, we could build something special. Whether he's going to be given the time to do that, I don't actually know. But where does it leave Eric Ten Hag and where does it leave Manchester United? I think firstly, for Eric Ten Hag, it leaves him in the position where he's found himself so many times over his tenure at Manchester United. The next game, the next game, the next game. And I think running a football club based on the next game is absolutely ridiculous. What is our contingency plan here? Because if we're waiting for him to lose, then we sack him. That makes no sense. That means you have no plan and you are reacting to what might happen. And we've seen over the years that when it comes to reacting in an industry like football, Manchester United have been doing very, very bad at that because we are never proactive we're always reactive so we're waiting i'm assuming for eric ten hog the management and the structure of man united are waiting for him to lose probably if he loses at brentford he might be sacked on the monday which is absolutely embarrassing once again from the point of manchester united who we were told are turning a new leaf are trying something different are looking to do new things and try new things clearly this is not the case unfortunately. And the thing that you have to consider is that when it comes to management, and again, I can't believe I'm speaking about this, we can't keep chopping and changing all the time. That is not a recipe for success. Chopping and changing does not work. All you have to do is look at the top three teams over the past five years. Jurgen Klopp, um, Liverpool, Manchester City, Arsenal, all those managers stayed longer than three years just think about that all those managers in the top three over the past let's say four to five years have all been there for more than three years and this just shows you where Manchester United is lacking and if they do get rid of Ten Hag again I will seriously feel embarrassed on behalf of Manchester United I would feel embarrassed as a fan that here we are again while we see everyone else moving past us. And this is just another point that I want to touch on really, really quickly. I was speaking about this to, to um, a mate a couple days ago. And I was, we were speaking about how far off Man United have fallen. 
and realistically we've had so many teams overtake us that we thought we were better than I'll start with Aston Villa first. Aston Villa have overtaken us. Since Unai Emery came in, they have overtaken us. They're a better run club. The recruitment is better. They play, they play a better style of football. And they're in the Champions League. They're actually in the Champions League and we're not. So they have actually overtaken us. Which is actually really, really sad. Aston Villa was never a team that was in our league because we were on the top. We were always battling for the title. I'm talking 12 years ago now, 11 years ago. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, But to look at a team like Aston Villa, um, who we celebrated a draw against, isn't it ironic? Uh, We celebrated a draw against a team that was pretty much inferior to us for a very long time, but have now actually leapfrogged us and jumped way ahead of us. We are 14th in the Premier League table. Um, and I think realistically, if we do get rid of a manager again, it is really embarrassing. Like I said, I don't know how long he will stay for. Um, I don't know if he is going to be involved come next season, come Christmas, uh, come the January transfer window, who knows what will happen when we get to that. But for now, it looks like he is safe. It looks like Ten Hag is in the job. It's the start of a new week. Uh, We have the Premier League back this weekend where we play Brentford. I'm going to do a match preview for that later on in this week. We will speak about what exactly we can expect from the players, what we can expect from Ten Hag. Um, There are some interesting um, topics that have come out. A lot of ex-players speaking, as always, about who they think their next manager should be. Um, We've had um, Amarim come out, the manager of, is it Sporting in Portugal? Um, he might be the new hipster coach that comes in to try and fix Manchester United, but it really is a fixing job. Um, and I think if Ten Hag is given the time, maybe he is the man to be able to fix that. Remember to let me know your thoughts in the comments and also hit subscribe on the channel if you enjoy this content. We've been seeing some really, really good numbers on the channel doing this new long form thing uh, where I'm enjoying speaking about football and about Manchester United and enjoying reading your comments and responding to it. So remember to always comment your thoughts down below, whether you agree or disagree and what you think could be better for Manchester United and where to go from here. I'll end off by saying that if Ineos do decide to let Eric Ten Hag go, um, like I said, number one, financially, it's an absolute joke. Spending so much money on players, recruitment. I'm speaking about only their ones, not before they came in. Uh, They went and they got him a lot of players. Uh, They gave him a new contract. Said to him, look, you are our man. We're going to stick with you. Three months later, you're not our man. We're not going to stick with you. And we have to pay you out. Now, obviously, we know the payout is 17 million. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm speaking about all the players that we brought in. Our bench against Aston Villa was a total worth of 430 odd million pounds, give or take. Um, That's a lot of money spent and a new manager coming in might not want to use those players. Number two, Ineos was supposed to bring in a new structure and create a new foundation and create a new system in which a manager functions under a team of recruiters, um, the CEO, director of football. Uh, to create the proper recruitment, to create the proper style of tactics. If Ten Hag goes, all this has to start again. They have to get used to a new manager. The manager has to figure out what they want to do. And if you're looking at someone like Thomas Tuchel, he doesn't enjoy that sort of structure. He wants his own structure. He wants to be in charge of tactics and style of play. So again, Ineos look like losers are over there. And number three, It shows again that we still have the Glazers at the club. The Glazers are still in in control of Manchester United. Yes, Sir Jim and his team, Ineos, are in charge of the footballing side. But everything needs money, doesn't it? Everything needs a sign-off. Everything needs someone to sign the check-off and to say this can be done, this cannot be done. And the Glazers are still heavily involved in that. Joel, I don't know if Avram is super involved, but we know Joel was recently in the UK for those important meetings. So clearly they are extremely involved. And this would be, again, another letdown. But for now, Eric Ten Hag is safe. Who knows for how long? I don't know for how long. You can let me know your thoughts in the comments. Remember to smash a like on this video and I'll see you in the next one.